the you know the 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 strange thing about this is that you know i i've obviously lived for uh several years in boston i grew up uh, 40 miles west of boston uh i went to law school for a year in boston um I've been to multiple of those Patriot Day Sox games. I've observed a couple of Boston marathons. I distinctly remember being in law school and walking home from uh, law school on Calm Ave that day through Kenmore Square, um, which is just to the west of where the marathon sort of passes by as it heads down another, I don't know, dozen blocks until it's finished, and thinking, God, I wish I wasn't in law school because everybody was partying. I mean, literally everybody was partying. Um, as I was walking down the streets and, uh, you know, feeling sorry for myself, boo-hoo. Um, and so it's strange to to contemplate you know, one's emotional proximity to uh, an event like this. And because, you know, I had uh, family who I knew were at the Sox game yesterday, and because I knew all those locations and spent quite a bunch of time hanging out half drunk on the Boston Public Library steps and drank all up and down Boylston Street at different times, um, and, you know, the perspective of, of, of being in Boston, you don't contemplate the idea of being hit with a terrorist attack, frankly, because there's this perception of if there's going to be a terrorist attack or this type of attack, let's say, um, on the East Coast, they're just going to go to New York. They're just going to do it in New York because there's going to be a lot more media there. Um, but it is, you know, I'm obviously, you know, the, we're, we're talking about three dead. We're talking about 176 uh, uh, wounded, 17 who are critical. Maybe the, the death toll will rise. Hopefully not. Uh, people's limbs blown off. Apparently, be, um, according to the, the doctors that were treating uh, victims, there was a sense that the bombs were placed on the ground or near the ground because virtually all of the injuries uh, took place in the lower part of people's bodies. Some people lost legs. Uh, but there was very few casualties walking around uh, with head wounds or with chest wounds. Uh, and so it's, the doctors at least speculated that the bombs were, were planted on the, uh, on, on, on the ground here. But the, I mean, the point is, is that, you know, I remember when, uh, Oklahoma happened. Obviously I remember, uh, when, obviously 9-11 was in the, the city, but, um, there's, the authorities clearly don't feel that this is a national threat in the way that w they did on 9-11. And so at the very least, despite the fact that we don't know who, who perpetrated this or why, it's more analogous to Oklahoma. And of course, in Oklahoma, you had literally hundreds more people die. Um, and in some way, maybe we're more sensitized uh, to these things after 9-11. But I think, you know, for me personally, just because I know Boston, uh, because I have relatives who were, you know, not not far from there, um, I'm more sensitive to it. And it makes you sort of, you know, contemplate there's something inevitable that's going to um, happen, you know, where, where people are concerned about their own families and then they are concerned about their own 
hometown, and then they are concerned about their own nationalities. Uh, and, th and there is a inescapable hierarchy of concern that we have. With that said, you know, what struck me was that yesterday I mentioned in passing at one point in the program, you know, 50 people plus killed in Iraq over the weekend. And that was it. And we moved on. And it didn't seem awkward. It didn't, it didn't make me pause for a moment that we could just move on and talk about other things and do an interview. Uh, the idea of, you know, we had an interview scheduled today. We're going to do it later in the week. But the idea that I could have done that today was, of course, uh, I, I couldn't even contemplate doing that. Yet, 50 people die over the weekend in Iraq. And in many respects, we, uh, we are all more culpable in the deaths of those 50 people than we certainly are in the deaths of those uh, three in Boston yesterday. And there's been literally hundreds, uh, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, who have died in Iraq in just as horrific, if not more horrific, circumstances that we don't, um, but just don't resonate with us in the same way. And, you know, at this juncture, when we don't know who committed these acts, we don't know why they did, The, the only thing that we can sort of take away from this type of situation is, at this point, is to examine how we empathize with humanity at large. There's been tens of thousands of eight-year-olds, maybe not eight-year-olds, but children, who have been killed in Iraq, in Afghanistan, um, in places around the world where we're not in any way implicated who are suffering and uh, yet we don't we don't contemplate their deaths um, even even I mean even a fraction of a fraction to the extent that we're contemplating the deaths of you know, these people in Boston or the way that we did in Newtown, for that matter. Uh, and some of it is just simply human nature. I mean, I guess it all, in many respects, is human nature. But I think, you know, the challenge for us, uh, among other challenges, which, of course, have to do with civil liberties and the way that we react to this, regardless of who uh, perpetrated this, uh, one of the challenges is to expand our capacity to empathize and recognize the humanity of people who suffer all around the world. And particularly those who suffer um, as a function of what we do and what uh, is done in our names by our government. 